The other thing that's happening, obviously, in October is that all the games are coming out, and one that has come out, um, actually comes out tomorrow, uh, but I got my code on Friday. We did an unboxing, and I think we were, actually, I think the video's still set to private. Somebody reached out to me and said uh, we were too soon on revealing the toys for some reason, um, So I, <laughs> but I had no idea, so it was an honest mistake. Everybody forgave me, um, but Starlink Battle for Atlas uh, is here. It's upon us, and the, uh, the toys are hitting the shelves, and uh, you can jump into this Toys to Life game made by Ubisoft, and it is a big um, space shooter experience, but more than that, it is a massive role-playing experience, and it's also a Star Fox game if you play it on the Nintendo 64, and I will say, I've got it on the PlayStation 4, and I'm gonna show you the game a little bit later on the PlayStation 4 so you can see some of the visuals and some of the storytelling in that, um, but there is no way in hell I would play this game on any other platform than the Nintendo Switch if I had a choice. Uh, now, clearly, if you don't have a choice uh, and you don't want to plunk down the dough for the Nintendo Switch uh, right now, that's that's fine. You're still going to have a good time with Starlink. Uh, but Starlink with Star Fox and Slippy the Toad. Slippy the Toad! Freaked out Slippy the Toad with his amphibian fingers, who is also a hacker in this game. He's crazy. He's always in trouble. I love that guy. And Falco, and, and they're all chasing after Star Wolf. They, they kind of wedged that whole Star Fox story into the game. Uh, elegantly, but you can tell it's just like it's like they tetris it into the experience. And I was curious to see when I played it for about an hour on the PlayStation 4 just to see the uh, opening sequence and the storytelling and the, the chatter. I actually like the characters that um, Ubisoft put together for Starlink Battle for Atlas. They're actually really cool. They, they feel like, speaking of animated series, like we were just talking about um, uh, the Dragon Prince, it does feel like they've got characters that they could anchor to a show, uh, but they clearly have built these characters with the idea that you're going to collect them all. You know, you're going to collect the toys and you can collect the little action figures they pop into the ships they're not really they don't they're not action figures but they're little uh, almost like little miniatures of the characters and each one of them can pop into the ships um, I, I dig them but the game is vastly improved when you introduce you know a lot of the Nintendo nostalgia kind of juggernaut of putting in Star Fox in there and do do a barrel roll you get a little bit of that action in the gameplay and you can reverse the ship really quickly and it's just amazing to have the R-Wing and I didn't bring the R-Wing to the studio today because the R-Wing is attached to my my switch I'm still playing Starlink Battle for Atlas it is a very very big game and it's actually a lot more complicated and complex than you would initially give it credit uh, four or two. It's not just a. Um, it's not just a space shooter. It's not just a, an avenue to sell toys. Ubisoft is smarter than that. Uh, first off, you can buy the digital versions of the game, not buy any of the toys, and still have a very fun time. It's an RPG, and you're leveling up a lot of things. You're leveling up your pilot. You're leveling up your uh, weaponry. You're leveling up your ship. And there's a lot of collectibles out there. You're collecting the currency of the world. I think it's called Ethereum or Illyrium or something like that. Um, you're in the pursuit of. Uh, creating energy um, to power big, vast spaceships. Uh, there's this evil force called the Legion, uh, headed up by a character I think named Grax. There's a lot of names. Um, and you sort of join the side of the resistance against these characters. There's there's huge global conflicts on and on several of the planets that you're going to go to in the Atlas system. It's like a solar system. It's a star system. Uh, and so you can travel from world to world, and you collect the money, and you collect the modifications for your weaponry, and you go and free and rescue, um, you know, different people that might be researching a, a base station, or you might go to a uh, refinery or something like that, or um, fix a, a modding station, um, and you're trading in the currencies, you're picking up, um, well, you're scanning details about some of the animals and things like that that might be cruising around. It almost looks a little bit like No Man's Sky, kind of dumbed down version of No Man's Sky. Uh, and you're also picking up some of the uh, natural sort of resources that might exist on the planet, plant life or uh, mining or something like that. You take some of those materials to some of these stations, you trade them in either for currency or for upgrades or modifications that will make your weapons better, your ship better. Uh, and then you're unlocking um, different attributes and, and skills and things that you will uh, then buy, purchase through your big mothership called the Elysia. There's a lot of names. I can't remember. And part of the, uh, the all the names part of it, because the core of the game is you're running around on Earth, um, always in a ship. 
and that's an issue, but you're always in a ship, and on Earth it's kind of more ground-based. You can fly up and do some uh, hovering above the planet and get into some sort of aerial dogfight stuff, but normally you're sort of on the planet, uh, almost tank, like hover tank-like, zipping around and taking out all the bad guys and stuff, or you're out in space. Um, most of the time in space, it's spent traveling and avoiding um, traps that are being set, sent out to get you from outlaws. Um, and you're in hyperspace trying to get from planet to planet. So you're spending a lot of time traveling or wiping out the outlaws that will invariably stop you along the way. And sometimes you get into these situations where you've got a long distance to go and hyperspace is just taking forever. You can see those numbers, you know, dropping down, but then all of a sudden the outlaws will come and uh, get you and you'll have to start that whole thing again uh, if you want to keep with your ship. Now, what you can do is you can substitute these ships in anytime that you want to. If you've got a, a bunch of them physically sitting around you or if you've got the digital version of the game, uh, you can play it digitally that way. On the Switch, you can... Um, uh, once the game is unlocked stuff, if you've got the physical version... It, it's a complicated game, I'm telling you. But once you've unlocked stuff with the physical um, goods that you have, they are also digitally unlocked if you undock the Switch and leave and play uh, off, off of the mobile, you know, portably. And it's very effective, it's very cool. Um, so you can access all of the different pilots and ships and things like that that you want to. Um, so you don't have to bring the toys with you. It's really fun to be surrounded by the toys, but as you can tell, the toys are not small. You know, the characters are pretty small, but the ships are pretty big. And I had all of these things all around my little gaming chair, my little, you know, my chair and my nook, and I, I felt a little hemmed in by spaceships, which was cool, but it was just like I couldn't, like, reach for my coffee or anything like that without knocking over a spaceship, you know? My little figures were flying all over the place. And also, switching the... Um, uh, switching the weapons, it, it, it's pretty quick and they're pretty robust. They're meant to be, you know, uh, inter, you know, uh, mingled by smaller fingers and smaller hands. You can just yank them off like that. I don't know. It's like a USB connections or something like that. But um, it it does take a little bit of time because some of them, like these, are in a little bit tighter on the bottom, and I was worried I was going to bust some of these things. But they're pretty durable. Uh, but there's a couple of different ways that you can do this switcheroo on each of these uh, each of these vehicles and the and the pilots and things like that. You can do it in real time, which is which gets really hairy because you'll be in a battle and all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, I gotta get a new weapon on there to take out this thing and this like. And so don't do that. Um, you want to pause it, but then of course it sort of stops everything and you're in the menu system, and the menu system is really like overwhelming when you first jump into this game. It's like, I, get, I update this, I upload that, I get this, I get that, I unlock this, I gotta save this guy, I gotta go over here, gotta do this. It was like, wow, this is a deep, deep experience. And all of it is pretty damn cool, but it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot. And also the fact that the ships, they're, they're 40 bucks each in, can, uh, in Canada. I just looked it up on Amazon. So a ship like this with a pilot is 40 bucks and it comes with weapons. Uh, you can get weapon packs, which are about 15 bucks. You can get pilot packs, and there's lots of, uh, you know, other characters that they're introducing into this thing, uh, and they're about 12 or 13 bucks each. Um, the Star Fox starter pack with the game and everything like that, with the ship, with the R-Wing and, and Star Fox, I think is around 100 bucks Canadian. You'll be into this, if you collect all of the ships, you'll be into this for a few hundred bucks, and you know, that's something definitely to consider. You, I think you really got to love the designs of the ships. I do. I think they're pretty damn impressive and cool. And frankly, it's, it's shocking that uh, the No Man's Sky folks didn't think of something like this with their game because they thought of everything else. And I know that there was a collector's edition that took forever for No Man's Sky to get just one ship out to people. And it's impressive as hell that Ubisoft has never done Toys for Life or Toys to Life before. And they've come up with... Uh, robustly designed and uh, sleek looking, you know, interchangeable aircraft like this or spacecraft like this. It's pretty damn cool, but you, I think you got to really be invested in this. And one of the challenges is that it's all brand new. And it, 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 I think right from the get go, I, the thing that I appreciated about Starlink, and I still have a lot more to mine, there's a lot of like there's a core sort of story mode that you're going to dive into, but there's also lots of extra missions that you're going to go off uh, on. But I felt like it's 
it's just a lot. It's a lot to, to, to bite off as one big, you know, fell swoop. All of the other, like Skylanders kind of built up to it, built up to their thing. Disney kind of leaned on all of the licenses that they had. Lego had tons of licenses and some familiarity with, with the game designs. This is like all brand new. We haven't had, uh, you know, cool Star Fox type experiences in a long time. We haven't had good accessible space shooters really in abundance. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of unfamiliarity, I think, for a people to kind of jump into with this. I don't think that this is just purely a kid's game. I think that this is a game for people like me that have been in the, you know, been following this business for a long time and have really fun memories of games like Star Fox and X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, uh, really dug No Man's Sky. Um, it's all much more simplified than the most robust simulations out there, but it's a lot deeper and there's a lot more detail than you would imagine this to be. It's not just like a Star Fox ride the rails type thing at all. You know, there's elements of that gameplay if you play the Star Fox version of the game. Uh, but for the most part, it's really like a, uh, you know, a, a refined and accessible No Man's Sky slash Mass Effect type fusion of an RPG, which is cool. So I applaud the hell out of Ubisoft doing this. I am still very curious to see how it's going to fare in the marketplace because it's very, it's very much, you know, out of nowhere in a way. I mean, surprised that it surprised us like crazy at E3 when they released it last year. Huge surprise when the Star Fox news came out this year, um, and I I think they've succeeded, and I like it. And I guess that's all I can really comment on is that I, I, li I like this game. I like playing it. I do wish I could hop out of the ships. I do wish that I got to know these characters a little bit more um, in gameplay, not just in the cool cutscenes, because the cutscenes are, are pretty sweet, and I like all the heads-up display stuff where the characters pop up in there, funny lines, uh, you know, lots and lots and lots of detail. But I, it's almost like I wish they had created, like with the Dragon Prince, a little bit of an animated series or something, uh, even just a, a short one, like a six episode run to kind of get us familiar with this world and then brought out all of this stuff. But you know what? At the core of it, they sent it to me. I got a chance to dive into the gameplay. I've been happy. I am uh, very impressed by the... And I shouldn't be surprised because Ubisoft is a very good game development company. They make really cool things, and this does. It uses the Snowdrop engine. You can fly from the uh, planets out into the atmosphere, you know, in a, in a wonderful, you know, fount of animation. It's gorgeous, and, and zipping through asteroids is super fun. I showed all of this stuff to my daughter, uh, who's six, and she dug it all as well. She, when I showed her that the wings come off and the characters pop out, she was like, oh my God, that's cool. But, you know, I, I still feel like more info or more education around all of this stuff, I think was probably prudent and probably a little bit more needed for the average consumer out there. So I'm going to give this, because I think it did succeed, even though it is a pricey thing. Uh, I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10 because there's a lot of cool gameplay in here, but I really want to know what you guys think and if you are gonna be jumping on board the Starlink Battle for Atlas uh, wagon and what version you're gonna get and uh, truthfully, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's fun in every version, but that Star Fox Extra just makes it so much more compelling, for me at least.